Johnson of the International Secret Police. Octopus listens in on the shortwave radio conversation between Chief Tipo at Black Pass and Clint Barlow at La Chaux-Zee Ring's home. He learns that his aviators have been grounded by Tipo's men and that Barney is going to fly to the pass and pick up Tipo and Chan, the chief pilot of the octopus. Speed, Clint, and the others will wait where they are until Barney returns. Then they will advance on the pass of the Iron Dagger to arrest the octopus. But the octopus has other plans. Meanwhile, we find the boys in Dawat Ziring and his father standing near the secret police plane. Gee, you've got swell weather for your flight, Barney. Yeah, but from what Chief Tipo said, it ain't so hot in Black Pass. In fact, it's freezing. Oh, Please. stop worrying and get going, Barney. I want Tipo back here as soon as possible. So that we can get ready to attack the pass of the Iron Dagger. Yeah, as soon as you take off, Mr. Ziring and me are going to knock Chuka to tell Bob Gilmore to gather his men and start for Lhasa so that they'll be close to us when Clint gives the word to start for the pass. Okay, Speed. Suppose you climb into the plane and wind up the motors. Okay, Barney. Come along, Dawa. I shall be most pleased to enter uh, the you plane. You must be on your guard in Nagchukar, Mr. Tsiring. I wouldn't dare send Speed there alone, and I feel I must stay here. Your mind may be at peace, Mr. Barlow. Speed is a second son to me. I shall guard him with my life. Yeah, sometimes he gets too anxious about doing his duty. He has to give the order to Bob. It has to come from a member of the secret police before it can be official. But other than that, it's up to you. Do not worry, Mr. Dunlap. Uh, There go the motors. Hope the octopus doesn't happen to be watching this takeoff. It might give him ideas. I don't think you have to worry about any trouble from the octopus. That is, just now. Thanks. That's a comfort. You are well armed, Mr. Dunlap? Oh, yeah. I saw to that. Maybe Chief Tipo has got everything under control at Black Pass, but I'm taking no chance. And see that you waste no time there. Oh, here comes Speed and Dawa back. So it's all ready for you, fella. Okay. We will walk over with you. I think Dawa would make a good fire, Clint. He got real excited when he saw the instrument board and controls. That's just the time you shouldn't get excited, Dawa. Supposing you got that way in the air. You'd go into a spin so quick it'd make your hair curl. But it is most wonderful, Barney. Speed pointed out the various things on the instrument board. The artificial horizon, the airspeed, the compass, the altimeter, turn and back indicator. Hey, hey, I know all the names, kid, and we haven't got time for a flying lesson now. I gotta take off. Oh, I am sorry. You needn't be. I'll give you a real lesson someday when we catch this doggone octopus. Well, so long, fellas. Uh, So long, Barney. Barney. And be sure and check with me over short way when you arrive at Black Pass, Barney. And again, before you leave there. Okay, Clint. Goodbye again. Goodbye and good luck to you. Good luck to you. Gee, I wish I was going with him. So do I, Speed. What a beautiful takeoff. The plane is like a bird. That's all in how you fly it, Dawa. Well, there she goes. Yes, and may he return safely. Now, Speed, shall we go to Nachuka? You bet. If we hurry, maybe Bob can get his men to Lhasa by the time Barney comes back. May I accompany you, honored mill parent? No, Dawa. Perhaps you can help Mr. Barlow during our absence. Oh, can I? Uh, yes, Dawa. I'm going to formulate plans for the attack while we have the house to ourselves. And you can stay by the short wave set while I'm doing this. You know, Barney may talk to us any time now. Oh, excellent. I shall like that. Okay, we'll get going then, Clint. We'll be back in no time. Very well, Speed. Let's see that Bob Gilmore gets his orders straight. We've reached the point now where there can't be a slip-up. The secret police plane has disappeared in the distance at last. I cannot see it, even with these field glasses, Quan Wu. Then it is time for my departure, Master? Yes. Our plane is fully prepared for an attack. 
There will be no danger to you. I hope not, Master. I assure you your pilot has no more wish to die than you. Is that not so, pilot? Yes, Master. It will be easy to destroy the secret police plane since they will have no idea that they are being followed. Climb high with your plane, and then once Dunlap has left Black Pass with his passengers, rip the wings and body of their plane with your machine gun. And the Honorable Wu is to fire the machine gun? <laughs> yes, he's uh, very clever at that. <laughs> very. You will have enough to do, pilot, to keep our plane out of their line of fire, should they return any. I shall elude them. I have fought like this before. Stay behind the backbone of this mountain range until you draw close to Black Pass. Do not allow Dunlap to see your plane. He will immediately suspect something and be on his guard. But cheering seven? They will notice nothing. Besides, the pilot knows how to take off from the field behind this castle so as to barely skim over the mountain's crest. No one will see the takeoff. Very well. We may as well be off then. I have no liking for this flight and shall be glad when we have accomplished our business safely and land here again. <laughs> and I shall be most happy to see you, Kwan Wu. For then I shall know that one of the secret police, Barney Dunlap, will never interfere with my business again. Right this way, Mr. Dunlap. Uh, this is the main building of the Black Pass Camp. Oh, suffering wang doodles, but you got a mess of bad weather up here, Chief Tebow. My crate bucked like a bronc when I started to land in the pass. The downdrafts here are terrific. Uh, the Black Pass is horrible. Even worse than the pass of the Iron Dagger concerning the weather. Yeah, the octopus sure picks the right places for his headquarters. Well, what do we got here? Papers. Let me get these gloves off and my hands thawed out so that I can look them over. Uh, these are all I could find in the camp. We made a thorough search of all the quarters and the men as well. Well. Ah, looks like some important stuff here. Maps and all. But we ain't got time to study them now. I gotta get you back to Clint as soon as possible. Where's Chan, your prisoner? Uh, one of my lieutenants has charge of him. I thought you might not want him to overhear what we say. Don't think it'll do him much good now. He'll never talk to the octopus again if we can help it. Has he changed his story any since you told us what he said over the short wave? No, as a matter of fact, he will not talk at all now. Oh, he won't, huh? I got a way of dealing with guys like that. It ain't exactly gentle, but it always works. Excellent. These men need such treatment. Yeah, so I judge by that arm of yours. Does it hurt much? It is nothing to speak of, Mr. Dunlap. Chan's bullet just creased the arm, but it, it left quite a hole in my coat sleeve. I'll say it did. Has the wound been treated? Uh, yes, and bandaged. Please think no more about it. Okay. Just let me put all these papers in my case, and then we'll be ready for the return flight. That is, if you're all set for the takeoff. Uh, yes, my men all have their orders. The octopus pilots, you know, are not very troublesome once they have been disarmed. Ah, they're yellow, or they wouldn't be in with that guy in the first place. Well, let's go. I'm anxious to get away from this freezing place. Very well, I am ready. We can pick up Chan on the way. Ooh. Wow, there's snow in this wind. Hope we don't have a blizzard or something. Don't like ice on my wings, no how. Uh, I should think not. Oh, uh, my lieutenant has Chan waiting by the plane. Say, he doesn't waste any time, does he? No, my men are well trained. We have little trouble here in Tibet, save for the brigands, and even they are easily handled compared with the octopus and his criminal band. You said it, Chief. A Tibetan brigand is a little white kitten compared to the octopus. Well, here we are. Is this Chan? Uh, yes, yes. I see you got him handcuffed and everything. Enter the plane with him. Uh, I shall follow, Mr. Dunlap. I want a last word with my men. Okay. Shut the door after you when you come in. I want to start up the motors before they freeze solid on me. Now, let's see, Chan. You sit here where Tipo can keep his eye on you. And don't try no funny business when we're in the air, see? Oh, won't we'll talk, huh? Okay, I don't think I'd like the sound of your voice if it matches that ugly map of yours. So you just sit real quiet and nice now while I turn over the motors. Boy, listen to those sweet babies run smooth as silk, even in this gosh awful weather. Uh, everything is ready, Mr. Dunlap. Good. I got Chan settled, I think, but you'd better keep an eye on him just in case. I want to let Clint know we're taking off now. Very well. Flight station calling Barlow. Flight station calling Barlow. Standing by. Come in, pal. Hello. Hello, Barney. Hello. Yeah, Clint. Everything's okay but the weather. 
A little snow. I'd say about a 200-foot broken ceiling. But I've got Tebow and Chan with me, and I'm about to leave Black Pass. Okay. We'll be looking for you. Check. So long. And now, Chief Tebow, let's go. Mr. Dunlap, we are in the air. Sure. Are you surprised? And I fear we would not get away in the teeth of that wind. Yeah, but I've flown in worse breezes. I'm going to climb now, Chief. Maybe we can get above this wind. I hope so. I feel we may be dashed to the earth by its force at any moment. Not a chance with Dunlap at the stick. How's about it, Chan? Would you like to be flying this crate? Gabby guy, ain't he? Ah, he is very stubborn. I fear we shall learn little from him. Yeah, we will, all right. But even if we didn't, we have enough on the octopus now to send him, send him up for all of his eight lives. And then some. Hey, we're getting above the wind, all right. The riding's much easier. Yes, it's much better. Wait a minute, I hear something. Hear something? It's another plane. Where in heck is it? Look, I can see it from this window. It's right above us. It could crash into us. I see it. It's an octopus plane. A machine gun. Hang on, people. They ain't gonna crash into us. They're just trying to blow us out of the sky. <laughs> 